What's up, geeks and gamers? It's Jeremy coming to you with another video, and today we're going to talk about Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes, the website where you can go to get movie reviews, where you can get the critic score, where you can get the fan score. It's become part of pop culture. Uh, we usually anticipate the Rotten Tomatoes score for movies, and it's always fun to anticipate it to see how everything plays out. But in the recent years, as the political climate has carried over into the entertainment industry uh, in a much heavier fashion. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes has become a lot less trustworthy. And I think a lot of that started with uh, The Last Jedi and the discrepancy within, you know, the critic score versus the audience score. And, you know, I used to be a, a really big fan of Rotten Tomatoes because I felt that it gave you a great perspective outside of your own. You know, you could get the critic score, you could see what the audience was thinking, and, you know, you could kind of make up your judgment as to how the film is being perceived. Plus, you can have your own opinion. You know, movies like Man on Fire, for instance, I don't have Man on Fire pulled up, but Man on Fire has a terrible, terrible critic score and a phenomenal audience score. Now, Man on Fire is one of my favorite movies of all time. You know, I don't think that that was anything to do with social justice, obviously. I just think that the critics were just out to lunch on that particular movie. But now we're in this, you know, the Trump era, basically, where everything that comes out of Hollywood and everything that these critics touch has to be some type of propaganda. And if it doesn't push forward their individual message on politics or social issues, then they're going to hold the film accountable, you know. Uh, you know, we had Joey Behar on The View the other day actively criticizing country music, uh, the country music awards and country music artists for not being political. Now you're being criticized for not being political. And then when you are political, but you don't say the thing you're supposed to say, you get criticized. You know, we live in such a, a crazy atmosphere right now. When we have something like she here, when she was announced, it faced backlash from the moment we saw images of this. Obviously, this is She-Ra. This is a, a remake or reboot or whatever you're going to call it from the 80s cartoon spinoff from He-Man series. And this is totally woke. This is totally social justice from the, from the aesthetic of the character and everything they're trying to tell. It's trash. Now, I haven't seen the series. I'm not going to watch the series. I have no desire, but I've heard from a lot of people that I trust, and it's bad. It's bad. So, uh, we look at Rotten Tomatoes here. We have a 100%, a 100% audio or a critic score from rotten tomatoes 100 now 13 oh, we only have 13 reviews right now interesting that the 13 lucky people that were able to review this at this particular point in time all have it as a positive score so i decided okay how does this stack up with some more recent you know netflix series that have released that got that were really good uh and you see this 100 percent to the 68 percent Already with 1,100 user ratings. That's a lot of user ratings already. For something that really wasn't that highly anticipated. That's a lot of user ratings. This thing just released. So then we look at something that was very well received across the board. Haunting of Hill House. Haunting of Hill House has a lower score than She-Ra. Haunting of Hill House is fantastic. This was an amazing series. Now, obviously, what are we seeing, though? We're seeing the critic score line up with the audience score. This was not a politically driven show. This was not a politically driven series. There was no SJW garbage in it. It was just a well-done series from beginning to end. We have critics lining up with audience, meaning this was a really good series, and almost 9 out of 10 people agreed with that. And look... 2,600 user reviews. This thing's been out for a lot longer than She-Ra. she has almost got half of the user reviews. I'm just saying that's a lot of user reviews. We'll get to that in a minute. Also, what else? Daredevil. Something else that is well-received. 93%, 96%. She-Ra has a better score than Daredevil Season 3. I want you to think about that for a minute. She-Ra has a higher score than Daredevil 3. Now, we can even get into the meat and potatoes of this, okay? So, with a critic score, you have the average rating, which is what you truly see what the reception of the film or series is getting. So, we go back to She-Ra. 13 reviews, zero rotten, all fresh. The average rating is a 7.58 out of 10, meaning the average score was around a 7.5. Haunting of Hill House, much higher, 8.3, which that's really high, by the way. An average of 8.3, go ahead and call it 8.4 out of 10, is incredibly high. Then we go to Daredevil. 
an average of 7.5 out of 10. So Daredevil and She-Ra have the same average rating and She-Ra has a 100%. I haven't finished Daredevil season three. I'm, I'm in the middle of it and it's great. And anybody that's seen it's great and you see by the audience score that it's absolutely phenomenal, you know? So again, we have things at least lining up from percentages here, yet we have this pretty big discrepancy right here. Absolutely perfect to a 68. Now, this is where it all started right here, though. This is where it all started to really get exposed for a lot of people. A 45% audience score versus that 91 for The Last Jedi. And this really started to bother a lot of people. This is where you started seeing that this was a more of a politically motivated uh, social justice stance. Uh, you know, shill media to push that ridiculous 8.1 out of 10. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. Now, a lot of people want to reference this, and I'm going to bring this up. A lot of people love to reference that 45%, and I do too. But they don't want to talk about The Force Awakens having the 87%. You know, these scores line up. These scores line up. These scores do not. And there's a lot of people that didn't like The Force Awakens, but there's a lot more people that didn't like The Last Jedi. And then we look at a film like The Dark Knight. And that is, that just shows you right there, man. I mean, you don't get much better than this right here. Average rating 8.6 out of 10, 94%. 94% of the audience liked it. This is an all-timer right here. But let's get back to She-Ra for a minute because I'm curious about these the user reviews already 1,150. Daredevil has 2,000. So not even twice, quite double. And Daredevil was is, is highly more visible series. Highly more visible, highly more advertised and anticipated. And it just from a, a character standpoint, this is part of the MCU. How does she already have 1150? You know, and Mecha Random 42 did a video on this. Now, let me see if I can find some of these reviews. Uh, they're not popping up for me for some reason. Um, oh, right here. Okay. So some of these reviews are. Boom, look at this. Five star, 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 five star. There's your half. But look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight straight five stars all today. All today. Look at there. Isn't that interesting? You know, um, more five stars with no substance whatsoever. No substance strange names here, you know, no verification, no images, and you got these five-star ratings just blasting for Shiro. Why? Five stars, no picture. Five star, no picture. Look at this guy. Put a fucking shirt on, dude. Anyway, um, more five-star, more five-star, no picture. There's somebody with no, and, and substance. So, Give it a two star. Gave it substance. You need a, you, you at least. I, I would like you to have a picture, but at least you're giving substance to what you're saying. So two stars. Okay, you got substance there. Five star, nothing. Five star, nothing. Five star, nothing. Or a little bit, a little bit. Okay, a little bit of details here. The majority of these five star ratings have absolutely no substance and no profile pictures whatsoever. So I don't know. You know, I feel like Rotten Tomatoes has pretty much completely been compromised at this point. I don't think Rotten Tomatoes is a trustworthy site anymore because we can't trust the critics because the critics are too worried about social justice. And it looks like with the thing that has happened with Resistance, um, you know, again, used to we could look at the audience score. Like I said, with The Dark Knight, you know, that reflects the audience. You know what I mean? You could always look at the audience scores and really get a, a feel for like, okay, have there always been fake scores? Yes, there's always been bots. There's always been people that will just trash a movie because they hate it. This has always been part of Rotten Tomatoes. But now I feel like the pendulum has swung because a lot of these companies are looking at Rotten Tomatoes and realizing Rotten Tomatoes has a lot of influence over the average consumer that wants to go to the movies. The people aren't going to sit here and watch me on YouTube yap all day. You know what I mean? They're not going to watch YouTube for reviews, but they'll go to Rotten Tomatoes because they know what Rotten Tomatoes is because it's now part of pop culture. They hear about it all the time. They hear their kids. They hear their grandkids. They hear uh, whoever talking about Rotten Tomatoes so they can go to Rotten Tomatoes. So now these uh, film companies, these production companies are realizing Rotten Tomatoes has a lot of influence. So now I feel like that there's a, just a concerted effort to kind of push these audience ratings up now. Um, and it just, and of course the critics are completely like, I can't, I can't take critics seriously when there's a movie that has any element of social justice in it. Now I can't take them 
seriously at all. And I'm having a hard time taking this seriously when it's a movie without social justice. But definitely, if this movie has any kind of SJW NPC elements to it, I cannot take a critic seriously. It's not even close now. It is over with. And Rotten Tomatoes, I feel like, has been compromised it's for sure on the critic side. And now it looks like the audience scores have been compromised. And we cannot take these things seriously anymore. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Have you seen She-Ra? Do you care? I'm not watching this crap. Um, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get my uh, statistics on your uh, streaming uh, platform on that Netflix. It's just not gonna happen. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. You guys have a great day, and we will talk to you later.